This video is about making <coughs> wide data longer using the pivot longer function in tidier. And we're going to be working with this Western Ghats data on trees from last time. Uh, and remember, we've got five girth columns when what we really want is one girth column as well as information on which tree and which stem each of those girth measurements is from. Now to start with, we don't have a tree column yet, and so we're going to go ahead and add this. We have one row for each tree, and so let's go ahead and take uh, our raw data and start to convert it into clean data. And so I'm going to say clean data here, and then we're going to use a data cleaning pipeline, much like we've used data manipulation pipelines in dplyr. And our starting point uh, for that pipeline is our raw data. And then we're going to pipe that data. That's percent greater than percent again, or control shift or command shift M. And then we want to start by adding a new column to our data frame, which is our tree ID. And so this is still dplyr, so we will use the mutate function. And we want to add a tree ID column. And then we want this to just be the unique numbers, one through however many rows there are in our data set, because we just went one tree ID for each row. And so we can say one colon in row for the number of rows uh, in our raw data. And if we look, we'll now see that we have a tree ID column uh, at the end uh, with a unique value for each tree. And we can see that we've got almost 62,000 trees in this data set, uh, which is pretty cool. The next step that we need to take is to make our wide data less wide and more long. And so we'll add another pipe and now we're going to use the pivot longer function from tidier. And the pivot longer function takes four arguments. The first argument is the data frame that we're working with. Just like in dplyr, the first argument for all tidier functions will be a data frame. And that's getting piped in, so we don't actually need to add it here. The second argument are the columns to include or not include when we make our table longer. And so in our data, the columns that we want to pivot are tree girth 1, tree girth 2, tree girth 3, tree girth 4, and tree girth 5. And we can indicate that in shorthand by saying tree girth 1 colon tree girth 5. And so just like when we've used the colon operator before to say the numbers between 1 and something, now we're saying the columns between tree girth 1 and tree girth 5. And so it'll just take this entire block of columns here. And it's going to make those longer. Then uh, we need an argument for names2. And names2 is the name of the new column to put the column names in. So we're going to take the column names, and they're going to go in a column. And then we're going to take the values from those columns and put them in a separate column. And so the names2 is the name of the column that we're going to put those column names in. And we'll call that stem. 
because that's basically what we have. We have information on the stem here. There's some extra information, but we'll take care of that later. And then values underscore two, and we'll give that the name girth because that's the thing that we're actually measuring. That's what that value is. And if we run this and go back and look at clean data, we can now see that we're much longer. We've got 300,000 rows and we're not as wide. And so instead of having all of these separate columns for girth, we now have plot ID, species code, the tree ID. So these first five values are all for the same first tree, which was originally one row of data. We then have the column header for each of the columns that we pivoted. So tree girth one, tree girth two, tree girth three, tree girth four, and tree girth five. And then we have the girth values from each of those columns. And so we've got 25, zero, 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 zero. But now they're one per row instead of spread out as one per column. And so we've made uh, a lot of progress in getting the data in the format that we want it to. And now we want to do one more thing, uh, which is to remove all of these zeros. Because remember, these aren't actually stems with zero girth. They aren't stems at all. Uh, and there were zeros filled in since non-existent stems have no girth. And so we'll go back and use a little more D plier here with another pipe and we'll filter out all the rows with zeros in them. And so we'll say filter parentheses girth is not equal to exclamation mark equals for not equal to zero. And now we'll see that we have the data generally in the form that we want, which is a plot column, a species column, a tree ID, and then a stem column uh, and information on girth. But we still have some more work to do because we really just want a number in here for stem and the species code actually includes both genus and species information together in one column. Uh, and we'll come back in the next couple of videos and learn how to take care of that. So this is the basic idea behind how to take wide data and make it longer. This is common when we have multiple columns that each contain the same kind of information. So in this case, multiple tree girths per stem, but this could also be like multiple counts per species. And we can make them longer by moving the names of the columns that they're in into one column and the values that were in this chunk of the data into another column. And we do that using the pivot longer function, which takes the columns we want to pivot, the name for the columns where we want to put the column names and the name for the columns where we want to put the values. Oh, right. Oh, that looks like lag. More forking lag. All right, maybe this time without the lag. Maybe this time without the lag. You'd be surprised how much time I spend making sure that the recording system is actually going to work effectively in order to record. Oh, that's not what I wanted to push. There we go. Okay, let's see.